Wow, Ryan Coogler really delivered. Incredible trailer, incredible. And he had to deliver because all eyes are on this movie. Not just because it's the sequel to one of the most successful movies of all time and certainly one of Marvel's most successful, not just financially, but also critically, best picture nomination, a number of Oscar wins. Uh, I think this one could follow suit, uh, you know, just based on this first trailer. But then, of course, the tragic and unexpected passing of Chadwick Boseman. And, the, you know, and really, it was a Sophie's choice. I think that there would have been people upset with either approach that Coogler could have taken, to recast or to do what he's decided to do, and that's not recast, which I know has made some people very angry. And, you know, I think that this trailer is more female-centric than male-centric, uh, whereas in the first movie you had T'Challa versus Killmonger uh, and M'Baku in there. But don't forget that the women of Wakanda were a very important part of that first film as well. And I think that you're seeing them you know, they're the, I think that the first movie made it clear that they were the real strength of Wakanda. And I see, I think in this sequel, you see them holding the line and making sure that Wakanda can move forward. Uh, and I think you, you know, even though Namor, I think is supposed to bring a lot of the male energy to the sequel, as well as M'Baku, who we see here, uh, you see also the women of Atlantis. I mean, uh, Namorita, I believe that's Namorita, looks incredible. So I think that's great. And I think that you should understand that, you know, Shuri did assume the mantle in the comics. So I think she deserves her moment. You know, no matter what Letitia Wright might be saying personally, I think the character and Letitia Wright's performance deserves that moment in the spotlight in the Black Panther suit. And she's going to get it. But don't worry. She's not going to hold on to it. I think, you know, it's going to, you're going to get another male Black Panther very, very soon. And there's going to be another development with another male character that you're going to see in this movie. I don't want to give anything away, but Marvel, and particularly, because I think some of people's confidence in Marvel always doing the right thing has been shooketh with phase four, but Ryan Coogler will always do the right thing. He's going to do a wonderful job. Uh, and I think that while you, a lot of you would like to see the role recast like they do with James Bond and Batman and all these other things, you have to understand in the MCU, they don't do that. The, the Captain America mantle has been passed. The Black Widow mantle has been passed. And you're going to see the Iron Man mantle be passed. And so this, I think that, you know, T'Challa and, uh, and Chadwick Boseman's, you know, just like those wonderful performances by Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, and Robert Downey Jr., uh, is, is going to be immortalized instead of, you know, replaced. Uh, and of course, Chadwick Boseman really did pass away tragically, and I think that adds another layer um, and makes it even more an iconic character and performance. So I, I think it, I think I think that it works. But of course, it's a very personal thing. And, uh, you know, Ryan Coogler is going to have to to navigate those waters, those emotions. Uh, but I think he's coming from a very good place, not only as a filmmaker, but as a personal friend of Chadwick Boseman, uh, who, of course, wants to honor him. So I'm curious if you know how you feel having now seen this trailer, uh, what your what your thoughts are. I think it will still be a difficult time for you to watch this movie, but that's what this movie is about. It's about going through that pain and coming out on the other side stronger. And, I, and so it's a journey that we're all going to take together. And what an incredible trailer. Speaking of pain, I think the MVP by far of this first trailer is Angela Bassett with that, that devastating line, with incredible delivery. I am the queen of the most powerful nation in the world, and my entire, entire family is gone. Have I not given everything? I mean, you can just feel the pain, but yet her, 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 her power and her insistence in moving forward and the, that sacrifice will not be for nothing. It's just, just you can just feel all that. It's amazing. And some of you are like, well, what about Sherry? Maybe Sherry's missing at that point. We don't know what's going on in the story. Uh, but you know, I'm sure she's, she's, I'm sure she's very sincere. And I think it's interesting because the movie, as we've discussed a lot, the first movie was all about the positivity of Wakanda. Wakanda as a city on the hill, looking forward. And it was isolated in that regard. And Killmonger, uh, who was a very compelling villain because he had a very compelling argument, he's like, you can't be isolated. It's unfair to all of your brothers and sisters in the rest of the world who are suffering. And so, you know, that, that even though, of course, Killmonger was a villain, that opened T'Challa's eyes and he opened up Wakanda to the rest of the world. Remember, he returned to the United Nations at the end of the movie. 
But I think what the, what the sequel is trying to say is that Wakanda and even T'Challa himself have paid a terrible price for rejoining the world. And I think that it, but you know, it's they still it's it's crucial to stand with the rest of the, the with the rest of the world, particularly the rest of the, the black community. And I think this sequel is reflecting a lot has happened since the first Black Panther film, the whole Black Lives Matter movement, etc. And so I think that this reflects a lot of how what the black community i i think you know uh as someone from the outside what i'm observing is that you know the black community is trying to move on move forward but society will not let them and i think that's that struggle that you know real struggle and emotional struggle uh and how the community feels and the temptation to wall itself off is is reflected in wakanda that's great stuff that's great stuff in a comic book movie no less incredible I also really like and appreciate that the Wakandan royal family are not just figureheads. I'm looking at some real royal families right now, but step up and they not only take care of their uh, country and their people, but they make the sac. They, they're on the front lines. Uh, also, so there's some. I give you a little hint to the story. There's some serious drama between Wakanda and I believe. Uh, Atlantis, Namor's people, or really, it seems his adopted people, and it's interesting to me because a lot of people, a lot of DC fans, have wanted to see Atlantis versus Themyscira from the Flashpoint storyline, and I think you're kind of getting that there, particularly with the Dora Milaje uh, doing a lot of the fighting. So, you know, once again, you know, because Marvel not only moves so quickly and is so uh, has such a plethora of stories they're basically doing the storyline first. And it seems quite epic under the direction of Mr. Ryan Coogler. Uh, Wakanda, I think also it's important to note, continues to feel very much like a real place because it has a persona. Coogler and his team are very strict about Wakanda's identity. Who is Wakanda? Wakandan, what, where is Wakanda? What does Wakanda look like? What is its own culture, etc.? And I think that not only creates a feeling of community that people can relate to, I mean, Wakanda really does feel like a real place. Um, but it feels more, it just feel, it feels more real than like say Asgard, which Taika Waititi has turned into a joke, a very funny joke, but you know, it just doesn't resonate in the same way. So I continue to be just really blown away by what Ryan Coogler has accomplished here in terms of like, not only a film, but a pop culture phenomenon that will, I think last probably forever. Like the title says, Wakanda forever. Uh, also, I thought the song choice was incredible. Everything is going to be all right. Like, again, we're sad, but we, you know, we need to move on. And as I said in my trailer reaction, I thought it was beautiful the way of sp the spirit of T'Challa and Chadwick Boseman is with the movie rather than a shadow that hangs over the movie. And I think that you were, you know, and, you know, before he passed away in his What If episode, he talked about, uh, well, he made, did, you know, in the, I think the season finale, uh, of what if season one, you know, Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa talked about death not being the end for Wakandans, and they they, they looked at it, you know, as more of a celebration of life than a uh, um, more uh, mourning a, what what was lost. Uh, and I think that you know you're seeing that reflected in this movie. All right, so let's take a look at this trailer. Uh, we got a lot of really good stuff to look at. All right, so we start out with Lupita Nyong'o on the beach. Now this is interesting to me for a couple of reasons. First off, Wakanda is landlocked. Uh, so maybe they changed that uh, because I'm not quite sure because there's gonna be a big flood as you can see in this trailer. And so if Namor can flood a landlocked nation, that would make him you know, even more terrifying. Uh, but anyway, I love that you see Lupita Nyong'o's character here. Looks fantastic. I think she looks great. I love the change in her look. Uh, I think it's great when characters have a different look. Not only is it fun for fans, but for people like myself, it helps a lot in being able to, you know, with poster frames, so you can tell the movies apart, right? Uh, so I think that I think it's very important, not only creatively, but from a business perspective, for characters to have different looks, movie to movie. And she looks fantastic. So she's standing on the beach. You see, uh, looks like a, uh, a South American temple behind her, and uh, Tinoch Huerta has confirmed that his character is based on Mayan uh, culture. So uh, I, I, is she like uh, in South America? I'm very curious as to where she might be. So she's standing on this beach and you not only feel like she's looking out, thinking about T'Challa, but of course there's an ominous feel to it as well because that's of course Namor's kingdom. Uh, and also if you've ever stood on the beach and looked out at the ocean and looked out at the wide expanse, particularly um, where you, you, know, you can really see very far because it's a clear day uh, in hot, hotter uh, climates, not quite as scary if you look at the ocean uh, on the Northeast, 
but it's terrifying because you can just see how how big the world is and how small you are. So it's fascinating. But I think this is this is great. So forget jellyfish. There's Atlantean warriors down there, man. All right. So you can see, uh, you know, um, uh, the queen uh, Angela Bassett's character is taken over. She's ruling, and this I believe is T'Challa's funeral. Uh, you know, wearing white to funerals is something that is uh, what's done in Hindu and Buddhist cultures, uh, and it, you know, it's and I, I think some other uh, cultures and communities do that as well. And again, as I said, it's, you know, this you see this the funeral is more a celebration uh, rather than uh, mourning. So I think it looks like a beautiful celebration of life. I think it's going to be a tremendous sequence in the film. So you can see everyone's wearing white and his family is mourning. I agree, putting the Marvel logo there is incredible. Uh, and you can see the Dora Milaje also dressed in white. That's gorgeous. All that's left of the royal family. Now this to me is interesting. I wonder if this is some sort of memorial and who's it a memorial for? Part of me thinks maybe it's, I, th I would assume T'Challa, but you know, Killmonger of course, he so famously said when he died in the first movie that he wanted to at least be able to see the sunrise before he died, and T'Challa, you know, granted him that that wish. Uh, and so I, I wonder if that inspired the T'Challa um, uh, memorial. It, it certainly inspired, I think, you know, Ryan Coogler and his creative team and how they depicted it. But that's that's just incredible. It's making you know it's making me all misty, you know, just to think about always being able to watch the sunrise. Okay. Let's bring tissues to this movie, boy. So the Dora Milaje, so powerful, so incredible, so great. You know, they've worked, uh, you know, I think that, you know, speaking of, you know, very, you know, strong, you know, identities for cultures and, and groups, uh, I think that this is established much better uh, than what they've, I, I don't know, I like the Themyscira stuff. I don't want to tear down Wonder Woman. I thought the Themyscira stuff was some of the best stuff that they've done. I wish that we spent more time in Themyscira. So this, so where is this? I believe that this is actually a meeting. My, this is, this is a guess. If, if I'm giving you something really, really detailed, it's a guess, because I don't want to spoil the movie for you. So I believe that the queen here is trying to maybe meet an emissary uh, from uh, you know, Atlantis, Namor, Namor's people. That's why she's, I don't know why she'd go alone. I'm, I'm sure she's not alone. I would hope not. Um, you know, uh, Wakanda can do, uh, you know, undercover, no problem. They're, they're very technologically advanced. Uh, but, you know, so I think she's here to meet the, someone maybe. She looks so regal and fantastic. And you can see the pain, you know, the loss but then also, when there's loss, there's life. Very well cut together trailer. So you can see the birth of Namor. Oh, it's such a cute little baby. Underwater birth. Now, in the comics, Namor is a mix of a mutant and an Atlantean. Uh, and so I'll be curious. They're clearly changing the origin story here. Uh, I believe, you know, first let's just see him as a little baby. There are the wings on his feet. He's so cute. He's so cute. So there he is. He looks adorable. He's, he's born. Oh, look, she's like, what the heck is that? <laughs> Me thinks this baby might be special. It literally has wings on its feet. All right. But uh, even bad things happen even to special people. But boy, see, he, he's all grown up and he looks fantastic with that Mayan inspired headdress. I'm not quite sure what the underwater aerodynamics of that would be. But, you know, he's this is he's also very regal. And right now he's, you know, he's showing off, uh, you know, uh, in some maybe some kind of court or something. I wonder what that is behind him, by the way, also. The, you know, the Wakandans have vibranium as their natural resource, incredibly valuable. And so I wonder if maybe the Atlanteans have something as well. I think they're going to try and show these two cultures not only as at odds, but also having a lot of similarities. Because they really should be friends. All right. So look at that. This reminds me of so many uh, cultures, you know, aquatic cultures. It reminds me actually of that sequence, to be honest with you, in Moana. But look, you have all these Atlanteans. I'm just gonna call them Atlanteans until they, cause you know, in the comics it's Atlantis. So, but it's also where Aquaman is from. Uh, he also is from, you know, he's also, uh, you know, uh, a mixed child from two different cultures. They're basically the same character. So this kind of really sucks for Aquaman. I sure hope James Wan did a good job with Aquaman too. <clears throat> but this reminds me of Moana when you have all those, uh, those, uh, the, 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 all those, um, I don't think that was, that wasn't like a really a warrior setup because it was a Disney movie, but you had all those characters on a boat and here they're using a whale. What a way to travel. It's also a little dune-like, dooney dune dune. 
Now, they're not happy about this drilling for oil. And I would think they would not be, right? So I'm not sure what, who's, who's, or, who's, whose drilling post is this? Is it Wakanda? I would think it would be a little prettier if it were Wakanda. Wakanda has such great aesthetics to their to their um, technology. But I believe there may be, you know, it might be just, you know, off the coast of Africa. So it's, you know, in Wakanda's backyard. Because you definitely seem to have maybe, you know, Africans or, you know, people from the black community working on, on this, um, on this uh, outpost. But they don't seem to be up to no good because you have some armed guards, they're lowering people into the water. Maybe they want that power source. They're like, we can't get our hands on vibranium. What else is out there? So um, you can see that there are uh, some, you know, I wonder, it, it's too bad they killed Claw, right? Claw, would, it would be great if he was here. But anyway, it was so silly they killed Claw. Uh, but, you know, they're up to no good, they're armed. And look, you can tell this guy's evil. He's using this poor civilian or woman who works there as bait. And that clearly looks like Wakandan technology to me on the door. So these guys are all going down. Ah, oh, look what they're doing to these people. So the throne room is flooded, and I wonder what's going on with that fire. But that's an incredible shot of Shuri there. Now, also, Shuri, the roles have switched. Here is Riri Williams, played by uh, Dominique Thorne, uh, a.k.a. Ironheart, who seems to have taken on Shuri's job as Black, the Black Panther character's new Q, right? Uh, just like Shuri set up her brother with a lot of cool toys in the first movie, it looks like Riri Williams is doing that for her. No wonder she got into MIT, or maybe, you know, it was vice versa, but still, uh, that's an amazing line to have on your resume. All right. I wonder if Riri Williams' series will take place in Wakanda or, you know, maybe on the, uh, in America when she's at MIT. I'm curious to see how that series comes together. All right. I don't think it's going to be in Wakanda because I believe, like, uh, the hood um, is part of that. So we'll see. Uh, all right. So looking great. Now, this does, you know, look at poor uh, Namor. I think it's interesting. He has never changed his outfit his whole life. <laughs> he's like, I like these shorts. Thank you very much. But, you know, he's with these, the, the, uh, the Atlanteans are blue, just like uh, Avatar, which I think is an interesting choice on the point of Disney, but it com it's comics accurate. Some of the Atlanteans in the comics are blue. For instance, uh, Namorita, she eventually uh, became blue due to do some genetic splicing with Atlantean or Atlant ancient Atlantean warriors, I believe. And she became, she got the name Chimera, which means ghost shark, which is a very cool name. She's of course played here by Mabel Kadena, who I think is gonna steal a lot of scenes. But anyway, I guess they've taken Namor in. They're like, okay, this, he's got wings on his feet. I can see why any society would be like, mm, he should come with us. But it seems like maybe his past life is burning. So I don't think he likes the surface dwellers too much. This, I think this is Wakanda. Um, and he's meeting up with his elite crew. We'll see the closer look at them later. Now, these are the mountains of Wakanda, run, of course, by the Jabari tribe that M'Baku is in charge of. And of course, if, if Wakanda floods, where are you going to go? You're going to go north. So that could be a refuge for the Wakandans. While uh, Namor is like, yoink, I'm taking your coastal city. I guess there is that, that water, that inland water. So I guess, you know, you think, you'll never think of a lake or a body of water the same way again. And look, things have gotten serious. You know, M'Baku, who's so funny, uh, you know, knows, you know, this is a serious situation. Oh, look, even Florence uh, Kusumba, uh, Ayo, uh, can see that there's a problem. Look, they've got their winter garb on, like action figures. I love it. Dormelage, winter outfits with the gloves. I love fingerless gloves, as you know, and the fur. Oh, they look great. All right. Well, uh, Michaela Cole is a little bit later on in this trailer, and we'll talk about their, her relationship with Ayo when we, when we get there. So there's Lupita Nyong'o again looking fabulous. And there, ah, uh, the queen. She's so cool. And so there you can see, that's, believe, I believe, during the funeral because, you know, the, the drummers are wearing white. And I hope that that mural stays in all the Black Panther stories and movies. I think it's incredible. All right. And there's that great line. And look at that. That's not even the best shot of her in the trailer, but she looks incredible. You know, um, when that when this look leaked, I wasn't sure about it, but now that I've seen it in film, I mean, it looks just so commanding and powerful. I mean, she just not only looks really cool and like she means business, but it's also like a, a really beautiful and feminine. I just think it's fantastic. And you can see Namor doesn't need one of those uh, things to help him breathe on the surface, but the blue Atlanteans do. So there's Martin Freeman. He's like, yeah, I'm still here. 
So this is great. Some people have pointed out that this is a callback to when Tony created his first suit. And of course, the arc reactor was basically his heart. And so she has her own iron heart. And I think that's really clever. And it, I think it gives a lot more meaning to this. So here, Namor, look, Namor doesn't even run. Oh, there are the wings on his feet. They look so fantastic. He can fly in the movie. He can fly. Uh, so that aerial battle's about to get pretty interesting. All right, I don't think they're fleeing. I think they have other plans. But here, M'Baku came in on a boat by land. They're attacking. Wakanda's fighting back by land and by, you know, sea and air, all the ways. And look, uh, N Namor's back is turned, talking to his group and uh, Namorita who maybe is his uh, first in command, you know, of his generals. It's gonna be a great fight. And look at the Dora Milaje at night. Oh, I love this stuff. So there's Michaela Cole. Michaela Cole, she is playing Aneka, another member of the Dora Milaje, and I believe she's wearing the Midnight Angel armor, which was introduced in a comic book run about Aneka and Ao, who are not only both members of the Dora Milaje, but are a romantic couple. So uh, I think that you're gonna see that representation in this movie as well, which is great, I think really important, because a lot of times you don't see a lot of diversity in the LGBT roles that are in Hollywood. So I think this is really fantastic. That's one of the reasons that Moon Knight was so celebrated in one best picture. Uh, uh, not a uh, moonlight, moonlight. I got Marvel on the brain. Uh, all right, so there is uh, Namor uh, looking in a mural. It looks like like Mayan in, 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 um, inspired again. I think thinking back to the people that he maybe lost and he was, you know, his, his birthright was stolen from him. He's been forced underground. He seems to be doing pretty good though. All right. That's a lot of gold. Now look at that, that's my favorite shot. And it's almost exactly like the, no, Amber Heard not gonna win this battle, but Amber Heard has almost an exact same shot in Aquaman 2, interestingly enough. Uh, but that's incredible. I mean, not only is it a gorgeous shot, but Mabel K uh, Kadena is really selling it. I mean, she just looks fantastic. I love her eyebrows. I have, you know, I've someone with thick eyebrows myself, I'm a big fan, and she just looks incredible. I mean, this is a great character. All right. So as you can see, they flood Wakanda and nothing is safe. No one is safe. Um, there's a Koye played of course by uh, Danae Guerrera who had a very good Comic Con. She's getting a whole walk, new Walking Dead series too. And there's Shuri on a motorcycle. And there's Namor being very regal. Now I'm not quite sure what's taking out these cop cars. It looks almost like a, a missile or a flying fish. I'm not quite sure. We'll see. Uh, so there's still a lot of pain, but then also dishing out the pain. Thank you very much, Dora Milaje. And there's Namor. I, some of you thought this maybe was the sunken Wakandan throne room. I don't think so. I think, you know, throne rooms, you know, often look very similar. You know, it's a big throne in the middle of a room. But I think that the, the jaws around that are a nice touch. And being able to float into your, th th your throne, pretty sweet. Although the Atlantean throne room in uh, Aquaman is also very nice, but that's very cool. And look, they're all, are they attacking a, is that a whale? Are they all getting on the whale? Or is that a ship? It looks like a whale, but I would love it if they were all attacking a ship too. That'd be really great. You'd be like, I think maybe it's time to take to the air. And then Namor's like, I'm coming for you anyway. That's incredible. And so they're all gonna fight and you can see, this is great. This reminds me of a lot of battles that you see when someone tries, tries to storm a fortress. Uh, so, and you know, and the Dora Milaje aren't waiting for them to get to the top. So I can't wait to see this. It's gonna be great. And there you have your Black Panther tees. I believe that is Shuri. Uh, I think it's really great that the suit is uh, gender neutral, uh, just like I think obviously the Black Panther mantle is going to become, right? Anyone could be Black Panther. And I think um, just the way, I just think the way the hand is held and the, and the, 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 just, the, just, it looks like a Letitia Wright to me, maybe, but it looks super cool. You instantly know that it's Black Panther. I think it's just a great, great look, and it shows how versatile the suit is, and that's wonderful, because then anyone, uh, any Black Panther fan could imagine themselves taking on that role, uh, because again, it's a mantle. It's a mantle to be passed down to the protector of Wakanda, and I think to the Black community at large, to some degree, which is really, really powerful stuff. So I think that's great. I think, it, I think you know, it's it's so tragic what happened to Chadwick Boseman. Uh, I think he will be forever honored by this franchise, um, which is really great. Uh, and I think this is the best way it can be handled, in my opinion, in my opinion. And there's always, as I said, you could always have a T'Challa variant, but he would be a variant. I like what they're doing though. You'll see at the end of this movie, there are some big reveals at the end of this movie. And then they, someone powerfully whispers Wakanda forever. And you're like, yes, indeed. Ah, oh, that's great. 
I like that they don't call these things like, you know, multiverse, we, call, we called multiverse of madness um, Doctor Strange 2, and I think to some degree we will call Black, uh, Black Panther 2 Black Panther 2, but I think, you know, Wakanda Forever is a great title, and I think it's, uh, it re you know, ma multiverse of madness was too long, and they didn't deliver on it, but they've already delivered on Wakanda Forever. It's gonna make all the monies. I'm very excited. Why does it say introducing Tina Huerta? Is this like his first movie? I mean, he was on uh, the, the, you know, um, on Net the Netflix show. All right, so anyway, I think it looks great. So what do you think? Share your thoughts down below. Thank you for going over this with me. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.